Greetings everyone and today I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Superman and Lois Man of Steel. Another great episode in my opinion I fall further and further and deeper and deeper in love with this sh uh, series show whatever you want to call it this live action offering with every episode. I think we're about midway roughly through uh, season one unless I'm mistaken and I can't wait for news that this has been renewed for a second, third, and even fourth season. It's just fantastic. It starts with uh, Jordan having his um, attack. I guess I was a little wrong. I guess it was just a hearing uh, issue. You know that he's super hearing now. He has that. So Clark takes him off to the forest of uh, forest <laughs> fortress of solitude in the Arctic, which I've heard a lot of people be disappointed by the fact that they're like, oh, it's just an ice cave, or it's like a hole in a glacier, blah 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 blah. Well, I'm like, we probably just haven't seen like um, the rest of it because this happens in the same continuity as Supergirl. I mean, there would have to be more extensive complex there than what we've seen because, uh, we, well. It's been in her show, and, um, you know, maybe budgetary constraints or something might be real-world reasons, but if this is in the same universe, even with the changes that were caused by Infinite Crisis, there should be more there than a cave and a little pedestal. Anyhow, he brings up um, Clark, that is, you know, Kal-El, Superman, brings up the hologram of his father, you know, which is the interface for the computer, uh, for Krypton, Kryptonite, you know, Krypton, I should say, you know, the... Um, that's part of the fortress famously the you know whole uh, network there the AI and um, it like analyzes Jordan and says that his super hearing has um, you know come into full uh, ability I don't know though you know it then recommends get a little bit ahead of myself but it then recommends that you know Clark just trains him and you know, there's nothing it says it can do I don't know why Clark is listening to this Jor-El AI I really don't you know, other than the sentimental, you know, his bio dad, you know, his image it's using. Because it's been wrong with everything to do with Jordan so far, and I suspect John as well, who will eventually develop power. It's got everything wrong since when they were kids, and just as recently as, a, you know, a couple months ago, with Jordan saying that his powers wouldn't develop further, he wouldn't get any stronger, which he seems to be, he wouldn't, he wouldn't gain any other abilities, you know, beyond the heat vision, which he certainly has. He now has super hearing besides super strength and heat vision, and his durability seems to be increasing a bit as well. You know, as evident by the last couple episodes. I don't know why Clark is listening to this. I guess he has, like, no other options. But, yeah. It, um, it doesn't seem to know what it's talking about. You know, this is an unprecedented situation, I suppose, with these hybrids. You know, in this universe, this continuity. But it has no idea what it's talking about. And, um... um I'm not going to cover this in chronological order. I'm just going to hit the highlights. Because, you know... Real life matters, you know, things have happened the last couple of days, and I've forgotten the exact sequence of events, but I do remember in general what happens, you know, maybe not exactly when, but uh, another interesting storyline that continued is now with Morgan Edge convincing Lana, Lana Lang, to be, uh, I don't remember her, um, that's her maiden name, I don't remember her married name, but I can never remember the name of her husband. Either his first name or his surname, like his last name. Anyhow, um, anyway, whatever. Um, uh, Morgan Edge has convinced Lana Lang to, uh, be his mind manager. And he told her that there, he wants five candidates that she would recommend for this, uh, executive program, like, um, you know, it's executive training program. And there's, like, one person comes to her, seems to be a middle-aged woman, 30s or 40s in her own age group, that, you know, wants this, like, um, and, um, Lana is kind of reluctant because of what she's heard from, like, Lois. You know, there's something suspicious going on at Morgan Edge, and Lois has asked her to help her, you know, and be, like, basically her undercover mole after the events of the last episode. Um, and she's starting to grow suspicious because she knows Lois, you know, is not only a star reporter, but, she, you know, she knows Superman, and by extension, this World Justice League or whatever passes for it, so, uh... There's something up there. She trusts Lois, and Lois's connections and super, um hero superhuman alien community anyhow getting back to what i was saying i rambled a bit she's reluctant to put this woman in the program because she's worried like what exactly edge is doing and um you know she's basically spying on edge but edge by the end of the episode selected this woman as one of the five candidates even though Lana said there were only four 
So, you know, Len is now even more suspicious of Edge, rightly so. And um, Edge and his assistant, whose name I can also never remember, uh, the female there, uh, uh, they um, know that something's up. They don't know about Lana being the mole, but they know about like uh, that Lois and the mystery person there, Captain Captain Luther, uh, are um, are investigating them. So um, what they want to like um, find out more about uh, what exactly they're after and how much they know. So they arrange for a very small amount of ex kryptonite to be transported and like people to find out about it. Like they allow the information to be leaked. And um, they kind of suspect Lan, I think, but they're not 100% sure who the mole is. And, um, you know, because not only for being friends with uh, Lois, but also the fact that, because um, I don't think they know Clark is Superman, but also the fact that she tried to keep the, one of the people she knows out of this program, I think it put, you know, more shade, more sass, as kids would say today, more suspicion on her. So they arranged for this to be... Um, transport it and everybody to know about it you know to be leaky the information and sure enough uh Lo uh, you know, lois and uh clark show up as does captain luther and we find out um that captain luther and um you know in the alternate reality captain luther and lois lane of that reality were not only married but they had a child a daughter, a teenage daughter, which I really like her characterization. She's like a typical teenager when it starts out. But then Superman and a bunch of Kryptonians arrive and just start attacking the city randomly and everything goes to hell. And um, I'll get back to all that in a minute. So anyway, the um, Captain Luther attacks the, um, he puts his like RV sideways on the road blocking it and attacks the transport, you know, with his weaponry. And, um, he manages to defeat them all and uh, gets a hold of that um, ex, um, ex kryptonite. And, you know, Lo Lois and Clark are not happy about that. You know, the methods of getting the kryptonite and the fact that Lois has determined that he's lying about who he is, that he scrubbed all the images of this reporter that was working for the Atlantic, but she had a contact that found like one. Well, actually, it was a contact of her uh, boss, I believe, technical boss at the Daily Planet. I hope we can see more of her in the next few episodes. She's kind of been relegated to uh, a third tier character, and I find her kind of quirky and interesting. Any, anyway, um, I say rambling again. There's so much in this series that I love, so many little details. It's just great. Anyhow, um, they take like the ex kryptonite, and um, um, Luther keep, keeps pressing that Captain Luther that he wants to meet Superman. So. Lois and Clark agree, you know, more so Lois. You know, everyone thinks she's the contact that she'll tell Superman. Superman will come and see him. Meanwhile, in school, uh, John Jonathan's having a hard time. You know, he's got that broken arm now, that wrist. And um, he's quite uh, unhappy, you know, about his lot in life. You know, he's lost all his friends. He, you know, he's no longer the star quarterback that goes to John uh, Jordan because of his burgeoning power. And he talks to Sarah and... Um, after eyeing this girl that um, I guess is going to be his love interest. She's kind of like one of the preppy type and um, Sarah says she's out of his league and then him and Sarah talk and just joke around a bit and Jordan me remembering something his father said that he you know he's back to farmhouse he's got to sit it out for a, about another week or two because of you know his powers and John isn't happy about this either saying he has to make some bullshit excuse he puts it to cover stuff. I'm liking what they're doing with John they're making him less perfect as time goes on you know as opposed to his comic book counterpart with just little you know just basically a carbon copy of that old Superman you know with a little bit more edge and I'm liking this I'm liking what they're doing with him. You know they haven't done much with his character so far except for he's been supportive of Jordan but now he's starting to come into his own in my opinion. At least I think so like I said. And um Jordan was told earlier by his father to concentrate on one sound. That's how you learn. You try to concentrate on one sound or just a couple sounds. And he concentrates, see if he can find, like, um, like, uh, the, uh, you know, what's going on with Sarah. And, you know, he hears not only Sarah, but John and her joking around. He gets pissed off. And when um, jo uh, John comes home a little bit after that, you know, from school, he attacks him. You know, basically, after putting his hand, uh, fist through the wall earlier on his own in his room. And um, I thought for a while he was going to F him up. I really did, you know, because Jordan definitely gets more of a dark side than even this version of John does. And I thought he was going to F him up, but he didn't, you know. 
because of the fact that meanwhile, once again, you know, why this going on back at the ranch that they used to say in uh, Bonanza. So I watched that show there recently on Netflix, uh, while well, the pre version of a Tubi or where the film rise is one of them. And uh, one of those streaming services and I don't remember them ever saying once in that, you know, either the characters or the narrator back at the ranch. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but any but anyway. Um, the only thing I think that kept Jordan, you know, that cool, relatively cool, and from killing his brother, whose powers have yet to manifest, is the fact that um, he heard that his father was in trouble there. That um, because the father, you know, Superman went to meet with Captain Luther, and Luther has said it ringed around, you know, his RV and some old trucks and stuff, and it put in some lights. And it turned them into, so they emitted red solar radiation, you know, depowering Superman temporarily. And then he brought out, like, this large um, hammer, uh, like a metal hammer. And he started whacking him with it that worked by t kinetic energy. As soon as I saw that, I knew what the reveal was. And the reveal was that he was not Captain Luther at all, that he simply commandeered Luther's um, AI, that little spear he had, and um, his, his power suit. It looked like Master Chief, as everyone said. And he is really, get this, an alternate version of John Henry Irons. Should have, you know, Steel, a.k.a. Steel. Should have known by Man of Steel, by the title, but I didn't figure it out. His daughter, you know, is alternate Natasha Irons. You know, instead of his niece, appears to be his daughter in this. Well, it's his daughter. And um, I was like, yay, I'm like a huge fan of Steel. I was as a kid. So I'm like, yay, fantastic. And he's beating the crap out of, like, Steel, alternate Steel. Like, beating the crap out will, will be alternate Steel. He's, like, John Henry Iders now. With his hammer, and he explains, like, the further, it, you know, the further you throw it, or you, you know, you hit, you run before you hit with it, the more energy it has, and it can eventually even hurt you. He's, like, you know, crack kicking the crap out of the depowered Superman until John and Jordan there get in the, um, the, the, uh, track and, um, drive it, and, like, John's like, I shouldn't be doing this, you know, I have a license, but they don't have any choice, they crash right into, what they, they crash right into, like, uh, John and Ryan, I don't know why they didn't kill him, and then they break down, and, like, Superman tells them about the lights, and they break all that stuff down, you know, with the hammer, which is John can barely lift, they, like, smash it all, and, um, yeah, it looks like he's going to vaporize, like with his heat vision, Superman, he's mad again. He's going to vaporize John Henry Iron, but Lois shows up, and then, like, you know, don't do that, especially in front of the kids, and he decides, of course, not to do it. The Superman seems to have a lot more anger than the Prime one. I've noticed that, you know, this, you know, there was a time, you know, there was last week with the soldiers there, with Tag. He's kind of got in their face, and looked like he's going to use his heat vision, or at least beat them up. But uh, they take um, John Henry Irons to the DOD and lock him up. You kind of feel sorry for him because of what you learn earlier. Because um, Lo his Lois was reporting, you know, on this as she had to from a rooftop. And she explains, like, what the, um, what the weakness is of the Kryptonians, you know, the green kryptonite. And alternate Superman kills her. Kills her. Like, she goes off the air, we don't see it, but it's implied he vaporizes her with heat vision. Why her uh, husband, you know, John Henry, alternate John Henry Iron, and alternate Natasha Iron, her, her daughter, watch. And after that, they get Luther's tech somehow, and they um, start building, like, the, um, I guess it wouldn't be Hulkbuster, it'd be Superman Buster armor. So, you gotta feel for them. You gotta feel for John Henry Irons. You gotta feel for the fact that he had to leave his daughter behind in this war ravished world with these Kryptonian maniacs running around under the purview of evil kind of justice-esque Superman. So all in all, Man of Steel was another fantastic episode. I don't think there's anything I didn't cover because they didn't show Tag, they didn't show Sam Lane in this, so um, I think I covered everything. The twist, usually I don't like twists like this, like the, the, the subverting expectations, but this was a great way to do it because I really did think this guy was like an alternate version of Luther. Or some rel alternate relative or something. That would be like Alexander maybe or something like from another universe. But I never once suspected, even after they showed the daughter or the title, that he would be an alternate version of John Henry Irons. And I hope they do more with the daughter and bring her into it. You know, it would be weird, dynamic. Uh, especially if they do away with John Henry Irons. Either, you know, Steel goes back to his own universe or he dies. Which I hope he don't. But if he does at the end of the season or the beginning of next... And she's like stuck with her alternate fa uh, mother and the alternate, alternate stepfather, who's a version, you know, alternate version again. You know, we're an alternate a lot here. 
of the guy who killed her mom right in front of her, you know, on, like, live TV. Ooh. Wow. That would be a complicated family dynamic. You know, and two stepbrothers, you know, alternate stepbrothers again, who are the offspring of this alternate pairing of the man she must hate and in fear, too. So, yeah. And, like I say, once again, it's not clear, um, as I said last time, um, what's going on exactly. Um, but we do learn that the female assistant is the one person, according to Morgan Edge and her talking back and forth, that this process has worked with, you know, there was like the guy from the mines there with his mother, but he died. I mean, that's sustainable, that lived. They tried it in other people and they've died. And he, talk, he talks about house, like when he's talking about these candidates. So there's some, something more going on here than merely powering them up, like Tag was accidentally powered up. This seems to be some kind of possession. As I've said in previous videos, they're like putting like Daxamites or Kryptonians or some few spirits or something in them. So it's just not being powered up. Maybe that's why Tag has survived so far, because he's not been subjected to the possession part, besides the powering up. But yeah, this is a great show. I love it. I've never been a big fan of uh, John Kent, because he's too much like Superman, and also aging him up. You know, she just out of his childhood. But I like him here. I like him so far, What you know, what they've done with him, albeit it hasn't been much. But I do like him. And uh, I'm very interested to see how they handle him, how they continue to handle Jordan, like how they develop John, I should say, continue to handle Jordan, continue to handle Lois, continue to handle uh, Clark slash Kal-El, how they handle John Henry Irons now, aka full Captain Luther, Atlanta Lang, her um, husband, her eldest daughter, Sarah, and now Natasha Irons, their Lois Lane's alternate daughter. I'm very uh, interested in that, they bring her into it. She make a great addition to the super family, in my opinion. And you know, you could also have your diversity um, points or quote or whatever. Not not saying that in disparaging fashion, just saying she could serve that purpose. You know, as an alternate member of the Superman family, which she kind of is. And you know, in the comics, you know, not there's no blood connection there, to even Lois. But uh, I meant um, you know the connection of the you know the being inspired by Superman. So all in all, I can't wait for the next episode. Um, this has been by far one of the best uh, super uh, power, you know, cape series, um, you know, superheroes that CW has done and Warner has done in general. I'm kind of surprised it's coming from Warner and not Disney because Warner has, you know, slash Marvel because Warner has such a bad reputation, this, in particular CW shows. But this one's been hitting it over the park. You know, so far, you know, being overly melodramatic, the reputation and um, crappy special effects, poor writing. I mean, take the uh, rumors about the Powerpuff Girls live action where they basically turn them all into um, promiscuous caricatures, you know, little caricatures of their uh, cartoon characters. Anyhow, I've said enough. I can't, well, I'll be back with my next review and I'll also be talking about AEW Wrestling probably on Saturday because it's not going to be on until tonight. Because of, um, it was shifted around, I believe, for either, I think it was, uh, I can't know if it was basketball or hockey, I believe basketball shifted around. But until next time, stay frosty, everyone. Bye-bye.